Back in Pitch Apple Hole, more traces of more rats emerge. There are a lot of bits in here. A marvelous Ooh, claw. Nice. It's quite large for the animal's size and very strongly curved. The thickness of it indicates that it was probably used a lot in digging, which would make sense in an animal that's largely relying on vegetation for food. Almost like a bird, isn't it? Mm. When you're both concentrating very hard on a specific mm. problem and you're coming at it from different angles, it's a result of that combination that you can really start putting things together. And that's how it's worked with McFarland and I out here. We're able to put together things as a team in a way that we couldn't do separately. All the fossils that can be dated are roughly the same age, about 125,000 years old. As they pour over the bones, a surprise turns up. In size, they vary wildly. Aha! Uh -huh. Piece of incisor. Partly preserved, just the enamel cap. This is of the larger size of Amblyriza. We found ones that are much smaller than this. You can compare it to this jaw found much earlier, and you can see that they match up very well in size. This one is clearly somewhat smaller. It's the amazing thing about this, this particular beast. There's fantastic range among individuals. We found teeth that are half this size. Different sizes of teeth mean different sizes of rat. At its largest, Amblyriza was about the size of a bear. At its smallest, only the size of a wolf. This is the palate of Amblyriza, the upper jaw, and each one of these holes in life would have supported a tooth. This is a tooth of Amblyriza separately found. And the interesting thing here is that this tooth is obviously far too large to have ever been part of this particular animal, although it was found in the same cave and almost in the same place. This is another indication of the massive, massive size differences in Amblyriza populations. Such different sizes over so short a time are a fluke of nature. Amblyriza, the beast with no predators, was adapting to some other threat. With nowhere to run, the rat was caught in a pitfall and trying to claw its way out. After an entire day of combing through the dirt of Pitch Apple Hole, the fossil hunters faced the challenge of every creature before them, getting out. Climbing 70 feet down was unnerving. Climbing back up is exhausting. end of the day is the start of his worries. Looking up from the bottom of Pitch Chapel, 50, 60, 70 feet to the top, the thing that went through my mind mostly <laughs> was having gotten down here, having found something, how am I going to get my fossils back up and my person? After 12 hours of digging comes the labor of climbing. Sometimes it's too much. I'm sorry. Go on? Yep. How you doing? You going back down? You going down? I just seem to get spooked at this point. Okay, you wanna you wanna reverse? I'm afraid I'm gonna have to. No problem. Ross escapes on his second try. Claire opts for the winch method. Okay, how you doing? Okay. Caves are, are the uh, only parts of the Earth's surface that are, are 
unexplored in, in a large degree at the present time and which are accessible to people with, with you know, reasonable budgets and, and uh, skills. So the opportunity to explore uh, in, in previously unknown caves is, is in itself, I think, quite a reward. I think uh, both of our reactions to finding uh, the first specimens was, was just one of vindication because many people suggested that it wouldn't be found. <laughs> the king rap of Anguilla, the island at last became a trap. 125,000 years ago, the ice age ended and the ice caps melted. Within a century, the seas rose 20 feet. The rats struggled to adapt, but Anguilla was shrinking faster than Amblorisa. In a race between evolution and weather, the giant rat lost. The seas are still rising. Within the next century, global warming may submerge even more of Anguilla. Unlike Amblorisa, the inhabitants can fend for themselves on higher ground, instead of perishing like rats on a sinking ship. <laughs>